I have uh, the lower crankcase of a Sato 50 engine here. Uh, I've got it all disassembled here because I thought I'd put a video together to demonstrate how I remove the bearings from one of these engines. Now, <clears throat> there are several ways you can do this, and depending on how old the engine is, how stuck they are, but the basic process for removing these bearings is on these Sato uh, 45, 50, 65 engines, there's a pinion gear in here. I think you can see that. And it's keyed. And that's actually to help for in timing also. But this pinion gear is what uh, the crankshaft uses to drive the timing gear. Now on engines that are the 80, 90 and above, that gear is cut into the, the crankshaft itself. But on these smaller engines, that pinion gear is a slide fit on the crankshaft so it has to come off and that can be kind of an issue and in front of that pinion gear is actually a little sleeve that acts as a spacer between the gear and the front bearing so the process for removing the bearings is typically depending on like I said the age of the engine I'll load it up with a lot of oil and kind of get it all lubricated in there maybe let it sit overnight with that oil in there if it's a really old grungy engine then you really need to this engine shouldn't be too bad to do but the process is obviously you have to tap or drive the crankshaft out of the engine. Now there's several ways you could do that. Um, I typically like to use, if you look in the front of the crankshaft here, there's a dimple. I usually use a cross point stubby screwdriver. And what I would do is, you know, set this up on a wood block, put my screwdriver on there and then either use a very light ball peen hammer or maybe a mallet and just kind of wrap that thing. Now before I would actually go out and do that uh, I would have it all oiled up and make sure it, ro it rotates pretty freely and then I would heat this case up using a heat gun. I would heat this whole case up and, to include the drive washer, the thrust washer here, to heat this up so that it helps the aluminum will expand a little bit hopefully and the steel won't so it will help facilitate getting it out. So that's the process of doing it. Now I'm not going to do it here on my bench because this tabletop is just not solid enough to do that. But what I am going to do is I'm going to move the camera outside into my garage and I've got a little piece of wood that I use to do this on and I'll heat it up and you'll see that I'll have an of glove on my hand so I can hold the crank case while I'm heating it up. I'll heat it up pretty good and then I'll just try to drive this thing out. Now this front drive washer is held in place with a tapered brass bearing or a tapered brass uh, fitting. It doesn't just pull off because it's tapered uh, long ways like and it's going like this so when this gets pushed on there and you tighten a prop on there it really tightens up. So you can't just pull this thing off like you should you could on a in most OS's or Enya engines. It just doesn't work that way. So you're actually breaking the mechanical bond from the bearings here and you're also trying to break the mechanical bond of this crankshaft to this brass uh, collar in here also. So that's why I kind of heat this thing up also. And it may take considerable heat and some pretty good taps but the key is when you tap it like that you want to make sure that you've got it on a flat piece and that it doesn't move at all because you want to make sure that you a, don't crack or damage the crankcase and that you don't hit this uh, non-straight. You want to make sure you don't crank bend the crankshaft at all. Now the other means that you could use to do this which I've done many times before, but a lot of people don't have the means to do this is you use an arbor press. So I've got an arbor press and oftentimes I'll use this. And what this would require is you know fitting the engine in here in such a way that you can hold it and then you just drive it out with the press. Uh, I typically, you know, it's usually hard for me to find a, a nice clean way to hold this without marring up the the crankshaft or the crankcase at all. So I typically don't like to do that. I'll use the press to install bearings because it doesn't take as much force to install the bearings uh, as it does to remove these things because this tapping this crankshaft out can be kind of can be kind of uh, tedious sometimes. So anyway, ideally what would happen is uh, maybe that rear and so here's what happens. The rear bearing oftentimes on these smaller engines will stay on the crankshaft because this pinion gear will be stuck on the crankshaft too. So as you drive it out, uh, if that bearing comes out of the crankcase, it's not going to go over 
that pinion gear and I've yet to ever have one of these things drive out leave the rear bearing in place and also pull that pinion off it's usually a matter of this crankshaft comes out the rear bearings installed and the pinion still on there and then you really have to soak and try and get that off so uh, it's only been a few months since I've replaced the bearings on this engine so hopefully it won't take that much force and it won't be that difficult to do but this is an engine that I don't typically run on airplanes it's more of one I use just to uh, do demonstration videos like this so I don't really care if I open it up a lot but uh, I'm going to take it out to the garage and demonstrate taking this crankshaft out okay here I am out in the garage on the floor crankcase on a piece of wood got my UB glove on and my heat gun so I'm just going to start heating this crankcase up We'll see if that's enough. Here's my, that's very hot. As you can see, the crankshaft has just started to drop out. This is free. And it's extremely hot. And there we go. Now, as you can see, the bearing stayed inside the crankshaft. That's usually pretty unusual. Usually that will come off, the bearing will come off in here, and I think it's probably because it's a pretty new bearing. So that pinion gear and collar, wow, that's really hot. All right, pinion gear and collar right there. So that kind of sucks because I was really hoping that, really hoping that uh, rear bearing would come out, because now it makes it difficult. I can't really get anything through here to drive that bearing out. So what I'm going to have to try and do is, uh, boy, let's see. I'm going to have to try and drive the front bearing out first. So, in the event that your crankshaft comes out cleanly and you're left with two bearings in here. Your best option is to try to remove the front bearing first. You're not going to have any choice because that's the one that's going to have to come out now. Now I've got a small socket here. It's a quarter inch uh, socket, quarter inch drive. And it will just so happen to fit through that hole in the main rear bearing. And unfortunately, it's only going to be able to strike or push against the inner part of the bearing, which is not really ideal for removing it, but I don't really have a whole lot of choice. So, as you can see, this is going to go all the way through, and I'm going to line it up, and I'm just going to try and tap it out like that. Now, hopefully I didn't damage that bearing by doing that. If I did, I'll just get another one. No big deal. So now our front bearing is out. We're going to use the same method to get the rear bearing out, except now we need to switch to a larger socket. Okay, so now I've switched to a 3 8 inch socket, quarter inch drive, so I can still use my same nut driver. Now what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to go in from the front here, and again, this is not ideal because I'm going to end up pushing right on the inner part of the, the bearing, and I'm hoping that it doesn't damage it, but if it does, I'll replace it. Bearings aren't that expensive, so... And this one might be a little bit more stubborn, so I'm probably going to have to heat it up again. It's had a little bit of time to cool down, so... If this doesn't work, this will be a good demonstration for me to go and do the same thing, but using the Arbor Press. Oops, let's go in this way. Let's see if we can drive this thing out, holding it as straight as we can. Actually, you know what? I might be able to just drive it out like this. And our rear bearing is out now, too.